All right, guys, so now we are going to discuss here, spoiler-filled discussion here of Godzilla vs. Kong. So you've been warned. We're going to get into some spoilers here. We're going to give a review, our thoughts, tell you what we liked and what we disliked, and all that sorts of fun stuff here. So I will kick things off here. Then I'm going I'm to say I'm going to say the things that I didn't like about it and the things I did like about it, and then I'll kick it over to, to Rick and John and... We'll, we'll get everyone's thoughts on it and have a quick speak. I know Rick it, it hasn't been able to watch it all the way through, but he yeah. watched a couple scenes uh, it looks cool, yeah. on stream I'm this past week. So Getting HBO Max tomorrow. So Yeah, so we will, we'll be able to get your input on it a little bit later. You can follow up like a week from now and tell us how you how you thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I like King of the Monsters, so... Yeah, that movie sucked, so if you like that I mean, movie... I liked it because of the action. It's like you said, like the fight sequences, the this, the that. Um, well, that's the thing, dude. The, I'm telling you, man, these kaiju fights were the best kaiju fights. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we were watching part of so it good. yesterday, and it was like, yeah. damn. Well, that's the thing. That's a, that's a good way for me to start it off anyway, I guess, too. The, the, every time Godzilla and Kong are on screen in this movie, it's amazing. Like, it, it's awesome. The movie's great, in my opinion. Like... The human stuff kind of sucks, like, on both fronts. The story makes absolutely no sense. The plot, the choices that they decided to do with, like, the Godzilla crew and just, like, the Godzilla arc, really. Because, like, the Kong stuff was better, like, human stuff I'm talking right now. So the Kong, Team Kong, human-wise, made a little bit more sense, just in general, than the, 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 the other stuff, though, the, God, the Team Godzilla humans... And then what they did with, like, the Ghidorah head and, like, the psychic... Like, they have the... This was this makes no sense. They have the skull of Ghidorah. And, the, like, because Ghidorah was telekinetic and had, like, psychic powers, somehow the skull, not like the head that they're keeping alive, like, that would make more sense. This is just a skull... Somehow, they're still able to, like, harness or leverage this telekinetic power to do, like, a Pacific Rim-style uplink to a, the pilot for Mecha Godzilla, And it, it just makes no sense. Even in movie science terms, it makes absolutely no sense. It's so dumb. Like, the only reason it was there, the only reason that plot was there and the head for Ghidorah was there at all was, for one, so Godzilla could sense it which already doesn't really make sense. Like, that's another thing. They they go on to say, like, the Titans can just, like, sense each other. And, like, I can kind of maybe give it to them for, like, maybe, you know, Mother Nature kind of thing. Like, the birds can migrate south. You know, I get, I get all that. So maybe the Titans can sense the other Titans. But then, how was Godzilla sensing Mecha Godzilla? Because that was the whole thing. Every time Mecha Godzilla got turned on... That's when Godzilla showed up and started just wrecking shit. But he wasn't really wrecking shit. He was attacking the Apex locations where they turned on like a Godzilla. So they needed a reason to explain that. So my, my theory is just like, well, that's why they had to use the Ghidorah thing. Which is just stupid. Like, it's just stupid. Just take out the whole sensing Titans thing and just, just that's stupid. Do something else. Because it doesn't make any sense. And then using the, the freaking skull to get telekinetic freaking link up with the pilot is stupid and the only reason that was there was just so they could kill the pilot and then have mecha godzilla go on a rampage all by himself because it was at that point it was pretty much ghost Ghidorah being mecha godzilla it just makes no sense it's just stupid and i think i said just like just make mecha godzilla if you want to mecha godzilla to go rogue just say that the pilot needed an AI program that they developed at Apex, because they even say that they do AI and shit and like cybernetics. So it just made it would make more sense to just say piloting Mecha Godzilla was too much for a single pilot to do. So they created an AI program that you know would assist the pilot with doing the thing and all that stuff, and just have the AI program go rogue. And then that's why Mecha Godzilla goes rogue at the end. You need a stupid freaking. Sounds like I hated the movie, but no, I, I love the movie. I thought it was great. Because when it comes down to it, I don't care about that stuff. They put enough of the monster fighting in there. The monster fights were good enough for me to where, like, I didn't even, I just didn't even think about that stuff when it was happening. I thought about it after the fact because it was stupid. And then the only other things were, like, at one point in time, the, the woman, uh, Rebecca Hall's character, said that she spent 10 years studying Kong on Skull Island. But... 
like literally if that was the case how did she know that he didn't speak sign language because they tried to say that kong hid that stuff that kong could communicate with them but it doesn't make any sense that that would be remotely possible because he was under constant su like surveillance at all times he's a giant freaking monkey and then you have the kid there who like just hangs out with him all the time and in no world would anybody let a small 10 year old child hang out with a giant gorilla completely unsupervised doesn't make any sense it wouldn't happen it just wouldn't happen and that's just a stupid nitpicky kind of thing and then the, the, the other main thing i got before i kick it off to everyone else here is uh like the structural integrity of these buildings is like insane like that technology in this world must have advanced just it's, it's science fiction at this point like the, the way like just the humans operate like just like these buildings were able to like kong at one point like kicks off of a building to punch godzilla and the building holds his weight and shit like in, in the real world he would have just fell through the building he's too big there's another scene where he's on like a aircraft carrier out in the ocean and he leaps like 300 feet or some shit onto another aircraft carrier and it just it just catches him it didn't break it didn't topple over it just caught him it wouldn't it wouldn't happen and then Godzilla gets on top of that same aircraft carrier and it just holds both of them while they're fighting and stuff. It, it's like, it's just, it's kind of stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Little things like that stick out. And uh, that's pretty much it. And then the only other thing is like Millie Bobby Brown and her like crew, like Team Godzilla, they're like sneaking through all these Apex lab buildings, like where they're testing Mecha Godzilla and they're just walking down the halls. And these people just don't have cameras anywhere. Like, there's no way they would be able to sneak around and do everything they did. They're just literally walking down the hallways. It was not like they were, like, going through air ducts or anything. Like, they're, they're just walking through the halls. And, like, these people don't have cameras. It was kind of stupid. But everything else about the movie was great, in my opinion. So, that was it. That was my rundown of it. So, John, you being the only other person who's seen the movie, what do you got? What do you got for me? You, you got a different take? Um, no, I, I don't think so. So, I mean, you know, my my pros are it was what it should be, which was giant monsters fighting. And and not only was it giant monsters fighting, you could actually see the giant monsters fighting and tell what was going on and, you know, how things were happening. That was my biggest issue with Godzilla King of the Monsters was every time it looked like you were going to get a cool fight scene between two of the monsters, they were constantly cutting away from the, from the fights to focus on what the human characters were doing on the ground or how they were in this, you know, there's a sequence at, at, you know, after obviously the Kong and Godzilla, they fight and you can see that fight. Well, and like it, they started off right away, even at the very, the first time Kong and, God, Kong and Godzilla meet, you've seen this one in the trailers, but Kong delivers a haymaker to, to Godzilla's face. And like, it's just a giant monkey punching a giant dinosaur lizard thing. And it's awesome. It's amazing. It looks spectacular. And, and that's, you know, you can actually see it happen. It's not done in, in the dark of night. It's not done, you know, um, under a bunch of fog. It's not done like they straight up spent the money, which you should do and made this just an all out brawl movie, which is, very cool. Like they had even some cool fights in um, the hollow earth, which it plays a part in the movie. And, and so, yeah, I was super happy with all that. Very happy with the way it played out. Now, some of the story stuff, you know, uh, my immediately upon seeing it, because Rob had already seen it. I, I messaged him and said like, what the heck? There's this whole thing with gravity inversion and these special ships they need to go through this gravity inversion thing. I was like, what the heck was the point of all that? Like it never comes up again. And we, we figured out later on, or uh, we talked about it last night on the stream. There's one segment at the end where Kong needs to be resuscitated. And these, it just so happens that these special ships to get through this special gravity issue have the power to resuscitate Kong. So obviously they needed to establish the ships before you got to that Kong point. But 
at the time it was just such a weird inclusion into the movie for me. Like it, they have, they have some stuff like that that just doesn't seem to really place well. Um, and, and Rob was talking about the Ghidorah head and how that ties in. And like, I honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm just taking Rob's word for it, that that's what happened at the end, because I have no idea who was controlling Mechagodzilla and what the heck was going on with it. <laughs> because when you got to that point in the movie, like they had established that the bad evil company had created Mechagodzilla and they were going to use him to fight Godzilla and take Godzilla out because they wanted humans and specifically them to be the, the alpha predators or the alpha creatures apex of, of the world apex predator thank you that was their terminology their namesake. yeah so they wanted to be the apex predators and um but you get to the point in the movie where they reveal mecha godzilla and their whole system for controlling it and running it goes up in smoke all of a sudden like the, their pilot dies and like so there's so i wasn't sure who was controlling because i'm not sure how an empty skull maintains the consciousness of a dead you know kaiju from a previous movie and stuff so there were just very weird story choices that were done like it felt like they could have simplified the story a lot more and and i don't think at the end of the day people are going to see this movie for a really intricate well you know well clearly they're not going for a well thought out plot but they're, they're even in a real intricate plot like the kiss principle with this keep it simple stupid like don't don't overthink the plots of these things. You have you have monkey, you have dinosaur fight. That's I mean, that's it. That's that's what you need. And, and they that part of that. it, they, they did exceptionally well. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing was like at the very beginning, I told Rob and Rick last night when we got on stream, the movie opens up with Kong in this virtual enclosure that's supposed to replicate or either is on skull island in some fashion and and i have no idea how kong got there i I don't know if they built this this structure around him in his habitat on skull island or if they actually like uh sedated him at some point and took him to this place um I don't remember Skull Island terribly well, so maybe something happened that I'm, just, that I'm just not remembering. But it almost felt like when the movie started, I got dropped into the middle of the story and like there was something else I needed to know beforehand. So you get over it pretty quick. I mean, they move along pretty quick and you get to the good stuff. But um, but yeah, overall, it was a good movie. If you can if you can like suspend your 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 belief on or your or, don't don't question why they're telling you things. If you just go along with what they're telling you, oh sure, of course Kong is on this island. Of course Godzilla knows who Kong is and will come for him. Like as long as you don't look for rationale and that kind of stuff and just go with it, it works fine. And it's 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 a good flick. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like I I think it was Skull Island. Like it started out with I think it was just Skull Island because like I said that Rebecca Hall's character says that she spent the last ten years on Skull Island with Kong. So the only thing that was weird about that scene, like what you're talking about, like with the dome thing in the beginning, is it speaks to like what I was saying with the freaking human advancement of technology is like how the how did they even build this dome? Like that's the thing yeah. that's like when you go when you come from King of the Monsters, that kind of tech didn't exist. It wasn't a thing. And this movie is a pretty much a direct follow up to King of the Monsters. So like now all of a sudden from King of the Monsters to this, they have these vehicles that can freaking manipulate gravity inversion and, like, all this. You know, that's the stuff. Like, if you just don't think about that, then the movie's great. That's the thing. And I was able, as I'm watching the movie, I just was making notes of all these things as I'm just like, well, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, it, like, then went on with it, and I didn't. I just forgot about it because then the pacing of the movie is like really good because as soon as something stupid like that happens, they cut to like Godzilla and fucking fighting something or, you know what I mean? So you immediately, you're not thinking about it anymore. Like it's, it's yeah. really good. Like they really get you right into it. Like that scene starts out on skull Island and then they're off of skull Island. Like, well really it's like they do that and then Godzilla's fucking attacking somewhere. And then now Kong's off skull Island and then they do one stupid thing over here. And then now Godzilla's attacking Kong. And then like, it's, it's paced very well to where you get this stupid stuff that sometimes doesn't make sense, 
But then real quick, they're like, but here's here's the monsters fighting. So don't think about that. And the fights, though, like the CG is incredible in the movies. Like the monsters look great. Like Kong and Godzilla look amazing. And like you were saying, everything's in frame. It's not yeah. like it's not quick cuts. Like they have like Adam Wingard put a couple scenes even where like they mounted a camera to Godzilla or to Kong's arm. So like you actually just like are with Kong as he's like on his arm, like punching Godzilla in the face kind of thing. There was that one scene in the movie that I showed it on stream where like they literally had Godzilla had Kong on the run from his nuclear breath and they literally zoom in on Godzilla's face and he smiles and laughs. Like, and it's an overt, like, he full grins like a happy dog and goes like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it kind of took me out for a minute. Like, I was just like, what? it's funny you mentioned that because I just saw an article this morning that said that, like, as Adam Wingard is the director, like, mm -hmm. he apparently, there was one, like, the company that actually owns Godzilla, that owns the, the IP, um, they have one rule, and it's that Godzilla should never emote, be it anger, happiness, whatever. That Godzilla is a force of nature, and so he should never emote. And that in and the director specifically said that they had to get inventive with how they got around that rule. That he said he wanted some emotion or uh, to come out of the character, and so they did. They did little things to try and hint at that stuff. And it made me think of that scene that you were talking about right away. Yeah, because there's that scene, which is a little bit in your face with it. And like it, like I said, it, when it happened, it pulled me out briefly. I was just like, what? And then later in the film, which this one made more sense and it was fine. Like when, because this was the other thing too. We, we were told from the start that there would be a definitive winner. And by golly, there was Godzilla beat his ass. But he, he, he beat his ass. Like, thank God he did. Because like... I know on paper Kong looks good. You know, he's the monkey. He's he's very agile. He's on his feet and stuff, but nah, dude. I went into this. I said, Godzilla better win this fucking fight. <laughs> like, it's gotta be Godzilla. If it ain't Godzilla, why'd you just name him King of the Monsters? Like, like come on. Yeah. But like, right when that scene, for instance, so when he, he you know, he fucking puts his big old foot on his chest and he just like stares at him and gets down in his face and roars and whatever. He, he gives him like a head nod. You know what I mean? Just like, hmm, and then walks away. Like that, like that didn't take me out of it. Like that made sense. Like that kind of stuff happens in nature when, you know, like, you know, cats will look at each other and they'll do that shit, you know, like lions, you know, whatever. So that made sense. But the big smile thing, <laughs> it wasn't bad. It was just funny. But they had a couple of scenes like that where, like, I mean, Kong obviously being like a, a primate, he can, he emotes, he talks. I mean, he's literally like, he knows what's up. So, I don't know. It was good that they had Kong, especially be able to be a little bit sentient like that because you you can relate to him a little bit more. You know, like you know what he's going through, and you can you can read his emotions, and like you know you feel it. With Godzilla, and like you said, if they don't want him to emote in any way, so he just does seem like just a giant wandering fucking force of nature. Yeah, and I'll I'll say this too about the movie. You know, I mean, while the, it was King Kong versus Godzilla, and they both get plenty of screen time, it felt like a King Kong movie. Oh yeah, it really. Does. Um, I mean, you you open with Kong. Kong gets the you know with an assist from Godzilla. Kong gets the uh, kind of the victory seen at the end and um it closes with kong too mm -hmm. so you know it, it felt like a king kong movie with with godzilla kind of it, godzilla will win best supporting actor <clears throat> best yeah. supporting kaiju um and at this year's academy awards but it was kind of like bvs even more in that sense like it felt more sure. like a batman movie than i mean i guess it was Batman versus Superman, so maybe it really yeah. was supposed to be a Batman movie, but this was Godzilla versus Kong, and it really did feel like more of a Kong movie, and not in a bad yeah. way. Like it was no. good. Like all the Kong stuff, I feel like all the Kong stuff, even with the humans, it made more sense and it was better to follow. Like the the, the stuff with Godzilla, man, it really like Team Godzilla, like human Godzilla stuff. That's just it went off the ropes. Like the Ghidorah head. Millie, like, I have to mention, like, Millie Bobby Brown, just like some like high school kids able to sneak around and do all this shit for like, like, it just, well, and, and it's kind of mine, like, we, 
we talked about on stream last night too. The other thing, like even going with like, I'm fine. I'm willing to go along with your <clears throat> analysis or your interpretation of it, that Mecha Godzilla was being controlled by Ghidorah. But then the question becomes is how does, how does Ghidorah know how to use this mechanical robot? Like he literally <laughs> fires missiles out of Mecha Godzilla comes equipped with missiles. Like how does Ghidorah know about missiles? And like, I'm going to, now that I'm in this new Mecha Godzilla body, I'm going to use my, my uh, thrusters and my, my booster jets and like, yeah. you know, wreck shop using those. Like the whole idea is very, it, when you start to think like after have fun, watch the movie, have fun, enjoy the fights as they're happening. And try and turn your brain off because once you turn it back on after the movie and start thinking about this stuff, it becomes very confusing. Yeah, the only way I could try to make any sense of him knowing how to use the body is just like Ghidorah use the Mecha Godzilla body is just because this sounds stupid even trying to rationalize it, but they were using him to do the co piloty thing, so he was already like his consciousness was like interweaved with the construction of the body, so he kind of became one in the body, and it's just like kind of like a, a natural response like just like if if you go to punch somebody you don't have to think okay i need to pick my shoulder up this many degrees and then cock my arm and do, you just do it you know it's just nature right so that's the only way i can make any rational explanation at this point it's just like well when he goes into that body it's all happening on reflex you know like it's just there but again you go back to the part where how does the fucking skull still have conscious? It's like, that's what I said at the beginning. It's like, if it was like they harvested the head of Ghidorah and are keeping it alive, that's a whole other fucking thing. I could be on board with like that existing and like you can maintain that psychokinetic uplink and whatever. But this was just a skull. Like, it's just a skull. Like, I don't yeah. know about you, but when you go find a skull... You ain't getting much out of it. <laughs> it's just, it's a fucking, it's carbon at that point. That's it. There's no yeah. psychic energy laying with it. But in the end, I, I really love the movie. Like, I thought it was great. Because, like, all that stuff is, like, nowhere near as good as, like, all the, the monster fights. It's the best monster fights. Like, I, I think I said that it makes, like, Pacific Rim, which was probably the best monster kaiju fights that we've had up until this movie. It makes that movie look like a Saturday morning cartoon. Like, it's literally, like, it's that good. It's not a knock on Pacific Rim. I love the first Pacific Rim. I think it's a great movie. But I don't like the pilot Jaeger thing, though. I think that's just as stupid as the Ghidorah head thing. Just make somebody drive the fucking robot. You don't need to make things convoluted. And it's like, again, with the Jaeger pilot thing, I think they only had that thing in there as a plot device for Charlie Day's character to go inside of the kaiju. That was the only reason they needed that stupid thing. It's just another, it's like, find another way to do that. Don't do like because now you're pigeon toed into this is this is a different movie. Who cares? We gotta move on. Falcon Winter Soldier. You got anything else you wanted to add? No, I mean that was yeah. Well, I think we covered everything. Cool, cool, cool. Rick, you got anything you want to add? I look forward to watching. <laughs> 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 I like Godzilla. I have a Godzilla T-shirt too, John. Uh, yeah, I like Godzilla. So Love. looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you'll be happy to know that Godzilla wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that was pretty obvious in watching those clips. Yeah, no, yeah. you you watch some of it, so you, you know what to expect. Now you've yeah. heard all this. Th See, if anything, you have the benefit now of knowing that you need to not pay any attention to what's going on. No, yeah, and just, just watch the fight. <laughs> I got a short attention span, anyways. So. Yeah, what well, is what it is. Question is, guys, have you seen Godzilla vs. Kong? And what do you think? Were you happy with the outcome? Did you think... Honestly, too, we didn't talk too much about it, but I'll just say real quickly, like, even the Mecha Godzilla stuff was actually pretty good. As far as the fighting goes and how he looked, I thought they did some cool stuff with Mecha Godzilla, like, when he had thrusters and stuff, so he was, like... He was like Godzilla, but he was way faster, and he was way more agile because he could make very quick turns and calculations because these thrusters activate on his back, so he was able to, like... Oh, it was really cool. Like, what they did with him was really cool, and that was the only... The only other thing I'll add real quick, too, is that a lot of the things that they did with the fights were, like, super practical and thought out. Like, there was a scene, for instance, like, multiple times where, like... Kong would try to like grab Godzilla's mouth and shit, but then Godzilla, as soon as that would start to happen, he'd just fucking start nuclear breathing, so he couldn't do it. So it was just like little things like that they threw in there that made it like feel real, like as weird as that sounds. So it was really cool. I liked all that little those little details and stuff I thought were really good. So if you've seen it, let us know what you think down in the comment section below.